Hey everybody, welcome back to iPad for Architect. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to iPad for Architects. Given the fact that we're all working from home, I thought I'd try something a little different today and share with you how I set up my studio and also share some of the parts of my workflow that stay the same on every project I do. So here is my home office setup consisting of a 2018 iPad Pro 12 inch, a journal for sketching out ideas and making notes and tracking my hours, and an iMac computer which serves as my control center for viewing reference images, downloading images, and all that good stuff. And of course Procrete on the iPad Pro is where it all happens. Here's my latest project. Uh, so we'll tap the gallery button, put that away, and get down to business. I started to use Procreate about five or six years ago, but before that I did my architectural renderings in watercolor, and here you can see the workspace for that and the very different tools required, but still coffee and beer, of course. Uh, getting back to my Procreate workflow, now that I make my living using Procreate, I have to stay organized. So I start by making a separate stack for each job. Here's a recent job for Johns Hopkins. Some of you may recognize this drawing from one of my last videos. The whole Johns Hopkins job required about 16 different sketches. Some of them very simple and unrendered. Some of them more like diagrams. And some halfway in between diagrams and renderings. The project on my iPad here is a more finished style than I usually do with many details and many layers. A new canvas that measures 4,000 pixels by 2250 pixels by 150 dpi only allows for 55 layers. So layer organization really holds the key. Another important part of my work is managing the flow of files, images, and information I receive from my rendering clients. My main trick here is to download the images for each project to a folder named for that project in iCloud Drive so I can access the folder from both my Mac and my iPad Pro. I keep a lot of resources in the iCloud Drive besides each individual job folder, including entourage I reuse on different jobs. Here you can see the images collected so far in this job folder. AirDrop is another great way to share images from the desktop to the iPad. Just right click on an image, select share from the drop down menu, select AirDrop, then click on your target device. When it's time to insert an image, just tap on the Actions button, then tap Add. Choose Insert a File or Insert a Photo. Choose the job folder you need. Tap on the image you need, Hey, voila. Keeping a desktop computer in front of you is also handy for displaying comments made by the client during the job. It's much easier to stare at these comments on a large screen than to constantly open and close them on the iPad. It also helps to create a PDF of all the reference images belonging to a job. Then keep that document open on the iMac and browse through it when you need to find that one particular image you've been looking for. Because there are always questions at the beginning of a new job, I often create a quick sketch itemizing all the questions I have and send it back to the client as soon as possible. After I upload the chosen view, I add a layer of solid white above the view. I then adjust the transparency of the layer to create a kind of digital tracing paper. Then I add a new layer above that, 
select the technical pen brush using red for visibility. Adjust the pen stroke size and the opacity. Make a few practice squiggles to get the stroke I want. And begin sorting out my questions while I start sketching. When I've got my draft done, I tap the Actions button, tap Share, select JPEG, and use AirDrop to send the untitled draft back to the Downloads folder on my Mac and on to the client. Getting my questions out to the client and then seeing their answers can literally save me days of unnecessary work. To watch the video replay of your progress to date, under the Actions menu, tap Video, then tap Time Lapse Replay. You can watch it at the speed provided by Procreate, or go back and forth using your finger to scroll through the video. You can also export the Time Lapse Replay by selecting Export Time Lapse Video and then choosing whether to export the complete video or a 30 second version. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing your tips for how you set up your workflow in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe Stay safe, stay healthy during quarantine, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.